welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we are going to get an update from Quincy Chamber of Commerce President Tim Cahill. First, though, we do check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, beautiful out there, brilliant sunshine. It's kind of brisk, 55 degrees right now. Today will be the chilliest day of the week with a high uh, barely 61. Look at tonight down into the lower 40s. Still no frost, though, and we're going to start to warm up beginning tomorrow with the sunshine. Just a few clouds, highs tomorrow into the lower 60s, and then look at Wednesday. We really warm up again. Spring-like temperatures into the lower 70s and a bit warmer still on Thursday and staying dry for most of the week. Again, sunny 55 in Quincy right now. In the news today, with just over two weeks until the Quincy City election, Quincy City Clerk Nicole Crispo is urging voters to cast their ballots in several different ways. Crispo says early voting will take place at City Hall October 25th through the 29th from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Absentee ballots will be accepted up until November 1st at noontime, and mail-in ballots will be accepted up until the polls close on Tuesday, November 2nd, on the last day to submit an application to the city clerk's office to request a mail-in ballot is October 27th. Crispo's hoping that the voter turnout will at least double the near record low turnout during the preliminary election in September. You know, past elections, um, two years ago, I believe it was somewhere around 15 percent. Um, so the mayor was on the ballot for that election. Um, so therefore, I think, you know, I'm hoping um, for 13 to 15 percent turnout. Um, we did have um, 8.11 in the preliminary with just the school committee on. Mm -hmm. But having um, the councilor at large and the city councilors on, uh, we, we expect a tick up. There are races for the at-large and wards one, two, and five city council seats and for three school committee seats. QA TV will once again provide live election night coverage beginning at 8 p.m. on November 2nd. Three blood drives will be held in support of a Quincy High School graduate who's fighting a rare condition. The American Red Cross blood drives are being held for 18-year-old Priscilla Bonica. She's struggling with a condition called HLH. Now the drives are being held at the Quincy Yacht Club on C Street this coming Wednesday from 11 to 4, then November 17th from 2 to 7, and on December 29th from 1 to 6. You can call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org and enter Priscilla to make an appointment. A program that helps to locate missing people who have Alzheimer's disease or other cognitive disorders here in Quincy recently got a generous donation. The Giordani family, including Quincy police officer Jameson Giordani, made that donation to Project Lifesaver. Project Lifesaver is part of a national program to locate and rescue missing persons who have wandered due to Alzheimer's or related conditions such as autism or dementia. Electronic tracking is used by Quincy police officers to locate a missing person who is enrolled into that program. And finally, we're celebrating a big milestone right here at Quincy Access Television. Last week, members, staff, friends, and board of directors members of all of us here at QA TV gathered at the Granite Links Golf Club in Quincy for our 25th anniversary celebration. Now, the chairman of the board, Quincy City Solicitor Jim Timmons, said that QA TV's founding has many people to thank. And I mentioned Barry Welch. Um, terrific guy, and then Executive Director Betty Campbell, who was here from the start. Um, she was with QATV before there was even QATV. She goes back to what, Continental or American or whatever. But Betty really held the place together, got QATV launched, and now the current group is trying to bring uh, QATV into the new generation. We. Uh, we just got a new truck that actually can go from point A to point B without breaking down, and it's all tricked out very nicely. Um, we're starting to live stream more of our content, which has been a terrific development. So there are a lot of things that are going on. John's gonna introduce the 
folks who work behind the scenes um, who deserve all kinds of credit. I've been very impressed by our new executive director, John Cleary. We've really leaned on him. Special citations were issued by the Quincy State Legislative Delegation and the Quincy City Council. QATV Executive Director John Caleri honored Operations Manager Chris Potter and Instructor Bill Early for their 25 years of employment. And Government Access Coordinator Mark Crosby and Graphic Designer Carol Themen were recognized for 20 years of service. Coming up, Tim Cahill of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce. Next. Welcome back. It's been a little while since we checked in with Tim Cahill from the Quincy Chamber of Commerce. So he has made the long trek over here from the, the Superman building in Quincy Square to give us a little update. How are you, Tim? Good, Joe. How are you? Good. Good to see you. It was, I think it was in the spring and things were moving and we had all kinds of excitement yes. and positivity. And then the positivity rate went up and then the summer's been a little bit back and forth. But but it's it's getting better. It is getting, getting better. better. Yeah. yeah for, actually, first time, I think, in person for us here at QHTV. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we that's were right. virtual before. Then, that's so right. so welcome, welcome and back. I, and I dressed as if it was going to be um, <laughs> virtual this morning, so I had to run home and get my coat just to be presentable. But uh, that's the thing; it's it's uh, we're still kind of working through some of the the, the kinks. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, I don't know if world, I don't know if world has changed forever, and we're, we're never going to go back to what we used to know as normal, mm. but. Uh, hopefully it will. Hopefully it will. But well, what mean, are the businesses <coughs> here in Quincy telling you? You know, how are they well, coping? Most of them aren't, you know, back yet. A lot of the really? office buildings stop and shop, oh. and you know, that's you know, over a thousand people. Granite Telecommunications in North Quincy, so the um, Quincy Mutual. Yep. A lot of people working from home, and in some cases, will continue to work from home. So, that's the part I don't know, mm. and it's. Um, it makes it more difficult. I mean, our businesses are doing great on the weekends. They're doing good at night. Uh, especially the restaurants and stuff yep. that, that make up a lot of our, you know, sort of business districts yep. in North Quincy, Wollaston and Quincy. But uh, getting people out that are working from home, they like to have their food delivered. <laughs> so, uh, and then just sort of picking up that lunch crowd to add to the night crowd. Because th the night business has come back. Um, okay. I think mean, people feel good. Most people are vaccinated here in the, s in the city and yep. in the state. So there's been no restrictions, you know, by City Hall on... You know how to oh how for to quite a while operations now. Yeah. and stuff which is different than boston so yes. i think we benefited from that a bit because people are tired they're just tired of the mass and tired of the rules and i mean we're americans we don't like rules in the first place you know <laughs> that's kind of what started that war back in yeah, the 1700s yeah, <laughs> you better be careful could start another one because yeah. it's you know it's past the point i think i think people the, the vast majority of people have been vaccinated especially in new england um and if you got to reward people for doing the right thing yeah. instead of punishing them or restricting them and and bunching them in with folks who haven't gotten vaccinated and then the whole mandate thing is is roiling the public sector right now uh, because the mandates are are in and and i believe they're going to affect some of the private sector too mm, really and people you know for whatever reason certain people don't feel comfortable getting the vaccine at this point and I don't think they should be mandated to do that. And if that affects our business climate, I think it's even worse. You know, I mean, we're, we can't get things delivered. They, nobody can find help. And yet mm -hmm. we're letting people go because they're, they're not vaccinated. You yeah. Know? Do you think that businesses like the daytime businesses you spoke about would pivot and use delivery services, you know, to get their products out? Oh, they have. Oh, okay. They have. I mean, obviously, Stop and Shop has done great. Sure. It's just people don't feel comfortable coming back to the office or they like working from home. Well, there's commute. part of that. Yeah. They don't want to commute. The, right. the thing that I think we are going to struggle with is we've always taken advantage of the red line. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that hasn't come back at all is, is train tra right. travel. The people just are not comfortable going on a red line with or without a mask on. Yes. So, and, um, and I think that's going to take a while because yeah. that was something we just did. We got crowded close together with people we didn't know. And, you know, and uh, that is going to be the hardest Row. And that's going to hurt Boston, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a tremendous, we depend on public transportation. I mean, just see how crowded the roads are. Yes. And the reason for that is no one's taking public transportation. Right. Not everyone's back yet, either. And yet, traffic is probably as bad as it was pre-COVID, uh, at least going into Boston. Anecdotally, anyway, it seems that way. Yeah. I, I, 
I would bet it is. Yeah. You know. So what are you advising Quincy business people to do right well, now? Well, in some ways, take advantage of the opportunity right. because if people aren't going into Boston to shop or eat or work, you know, mm -hmm. try to grab them here. Sure. Um, and I think we're doing that. I mean, we're, there's a Target. It's Target's actually opening tomorrow. Okay. Tuesday night. Up uh, they're at having their grand opening. The Abbey, right up in North right Quincy. Right up in T. North Quincy. Yeah. That's a big deal because we haven't had a big retail to move into Quincy since Walmart. A very long you know, time ago. A very yeah. long time ago. So that's great, you know. Um, and I think we, we, we are positioned to take advantage of people moving out of the city, too. Okay. Um, with all the new housing that's being built, both the condo and the apartment housing. Yeah. And the fact that we are still relatively affordable. I know a lot of people in Quincy don't think we are affordable. Yeah. Uh, the prices have gone up, but compared to some of these other communities that are that close to Boston, it, it's a, it's definitely a bargain. It's and then the quality of life, I think, is fast, far superior. Very suburban, uh, suburban actually. Yeah, I mean, the neighborhoods are still intact, right. and the development is, is mostly along the train tracks. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, I, I, for one, feel and I agree with the mayor that, you know, we need to grow in order to survive and thrive as we go forward. Yeah. Communities that don't grow and don't sort of change things, and I know change is tough for people. I hate seeing old buildings go down sometimes, being replaced by new buildings that I may not think are as, art, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it, the market determines that, not sort of us in higher, in the higher levels. Yeah. And the market's determined that this is where, this is how people want to live today. This is what they're looking for. Um, it's brought a lot of vitality to the city. There's a lot of young people living in Quincy now um, that weren't here five years ago, and we can attract more of them. Yeah, where does the future go for commercial development, though, Tim? We're seeing, as you mentioned, residential development. I think it's going to be life sciences. Yeah. I think life sciences is, we, we got uh, a grand opening in November for a new life sciences company at, at President's Place. It's one of three that is opening that are opening there. Really? Um, and we're looking at some of the, uh, the downtown, well, Quincy and uh, even Wollaston potential development for some life science building because it's exploding. I mean, we are we are the Silicon Valley of life sciences here in the, you know, on the tracks yes. between Somerville, Cambridge, Boston, and us. Um, we need to take better advantage of that, and I think it's happening. We're, hmm. we're seeing it happen. We're hearing a lot of talk about it. One of the buildings that uh, Fox Rock is planning to build may end up being a life science building. Um, or at a combination of life sciences and medical at the old building. Ross lot at the old Ross lot. Oh, interesting. Okay. So um, I think we've dodged the bullet by not having commercial development sort of take precedence in mm. the last few years because it would all be empty today mm. because okay. of COVID. But well, State I, Street is vastly empty right that's now. That's what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. Stop and Shop building is yeah. empty, and 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 Quincy Mutual. I mean, yep. those places. Not all of them are going to come back to full strength right. and take advantage of that. So, mm. uh, but the apartments are full. They're full, yes. 100%. I mean, it's amazing the vacant that there's no vacancy out there. Brand new Chestnut Place right across the street here is, yes. is yeah. almost Nova 100% Yeah, Nova is 100% full. Yeah. Um, I believe west of Chestnut. So we're looking at the mix. Mm -hmm. And I think the mix of, you know, new, you know, apartment, condominium buildings, along with some life science would be tremendous boost. Interesting. For the overall business climate. Um, Kendall Square is too, too busy. And th those are buildings that need people in them. You can't create new vaccines and you can't create life-changing cancer drugs remotely. Right. You got to do them in the, in the, in the shop. Experimenting. You know, and, yeah. and in the, the labs, as they say. So uh, we're seeing it. And the other potential is for some new development to happen down the shipyard. Yes. Talk to um, Dan Quirk and there's a couple of good sized startup companies that are looking, that expect to grow and manufacture goods you know, products at the shipyard. Everything old is new again at the yeah, shipyard. Yeah, it's, huh? it's wow. interesting. We have a submarine company here in Quincy, a startup called Dive Technologies. Mm -hmm. It started by uh, three guys, one Quincy resident, Bill Lebo, uh, and two of his partners spun out of uh, Bluefin, I believe, mm -hmm. in, in General Dynamics, okay. when General Dynamics bought them. They started their own company. They're on Willard Street today. Oh. They're growing like crazy. Interesting. And they're looking at potential space at the shipyard, which would be Ironic that that where the first submarine was built, right. and now they're building they're building unmanned underwater yes. vehicles. Yeah. So, and that's the new technology, so that you don't have to risk lives to go out and do offshore drilling, um, you know, wind farms, and 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 you know, so maybe some covert spying on the Chinese too <laughs> while we're at it. You know, well, it's the drone technology of the underwater world. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. And we've got this um, 
sort of airplane taxi company that's electric airplane taxi company that's also looking uh, potentially at the shipyard. So just that whether they actually go there or not, I think is, is, hope, is we're hopeful for, mm -hmm. but even if they don't, it just shows that people are interested. We've got the water, we've got public transportation, you know, we've got a port. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what more do you, what more do you need? To, well, it's probably the, the largest tract of undeveloped land in, in the city, right? It is, yeah. and both the owners, the Cashmans as well as uh, the Quirks, mm -hmm. want to keep it an active seaport. Mm -hmm. They're not looking to put condominiums in. They're not looking to put housing okay. in. They want to keep it active. They want to build things there. Okay. And, um, you know, um, Jay Cashman's already doing that. He's done a, he does a robust business, marine business, yes. and he needs the shipyard to do that. And Dan Quirk is, you know, potentially could be in the same boat if, if they're able to attract us, uh, you know, a submarine builder and a, um, you know, a, a water plane, basically. Yeah. So it's, it's a real advantage. And, um, and what's attracting them and what will ultimately determine whether they both come is can they get access to really good young talent, engineers, aerospace engineers, I mean, coders, people that will come if the, if the mix is right, okay. if, if, if they feel like this is a good place to live, a good place to eat. You know, a place where they can do everything that they can do in Boston, but cheaper. So potentially live in Quincy and work in it's Quincy that's, as that well. That seems like the future, especially yeah. with with you know with this change in public transportation and people. When you when you haven't had a commute for a year and a half, it's going to be really tough to get back into that. And a lot of people just said, I, "It's two hours of my life, or two hours of each day that I just." would rather either work yeah. or spend with my family. It's a lot of work-life balance assessment going on it right is. now. Yeah, it is. Particularly it with is. the cost of energy on the, on the rise, too. It is. It so, is. Yeah. For sure. For sure. What's going on at the Chamber? Well, we're, we're busy. We're busy. We're getting back to busy. We've had a great summer. Mm -hmm. We hosted the Farmer's Market this year in yes. Kilroy Square. Yeah. And our pop-up market on Saturdays at Kilroy Square, along with the Beer Garden. Beer Garden's closed now for the winter, Kay. and uh, we'll hopefully reopen in the spring. But we've got two weekends left of our farmer's market and um, our Kilroy Square market, as we call it. Yes, now. yeah, so yeah. So Kilroy Square is now sort of open for business. The signage is up and the mayor is planning to sort of kick things off and commemorate the opening uh, sometime in November, official yeah. sort of uh, commencement. Okay. Uh, but it's there now, it's on the map. People kind of yeah. know where it is. Yeah, people didn't kill, <coughs> say Kilroy Square to somebody and they didn't know no, what we, the heck we, you were talking we about. We struggle with that at the beginning. Yeah. It's picked up a lot. Speaking of the, the shipyard, right, it's a direct exactly. connection to the shipyard. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We have a breakfast, our first in-person breakfast since February of 2020. Wow. Uh, and we got a great speaker, General Joe Dunford, oh. uh, retired uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Quincy resident, BC High graduate, uh, is coming to Quincy on Friday. Coming back to Quincy. He coming was just here. Quincy, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, to speak to us. This uh, coming Friday? Yes, this okay. coming Friday. Uh, we have tickets still available okay. at thequincychamber.com. We'll give you some information to post great. For, for the event. Um, we have some tables available. And we have some single reservations okay. uh, at 7.30 in the morning to 9. So that may be a little bit of a change for people. You have to get up, get dressed, <laughs> go, go to Granite Links, which yep. is a great place to go. But I, I think we'll see a, a good turnout, and I think people will be excited to get back together and yeah. mingle. You have to put pants on. That's the only thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, we have another event that I'm extremely, we've been working on for two years as well, which okay. is uh, the two students of well. Quincy High School are going to build a tiny house. And they're going to start building it on Monday next week, okay. the 25th, I believe it is. Uh, we're going to have a kickoff ceremony at 1 p.m. with the mayor, members of the school department, elected officials, uh, the students. So they're going to build a house on a trailer. Mm -hmm. um, a full house. It's just a tiny house. All right. Um, yep. So, and I think uh, they're going to film the building of it with their their team that I think is trained here. They've got some students, communication students, that do some training here. Um, they're going to film it, and it's going to be like its its own tiny house show that we're going to have. Oh, and, all uh, right. We're excited about it. They're they're going to spend the next year building this by themselves. So the carpenters classes, the plumbing classes, and the electrical classes are all getting together um, to figure out how to build a house. Interesting. So we, and we've got a, a great group of folks who uh, have volunteered to uh, donate building supplies and materials. So that's where the chamber comes in is you're helping with Yeah, that. we've been working okay. with, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we've been working with. Um, it's allergy season. <laughs> for, for some reason, the ragweed is horrible yeah. this time <coughs> excuse of year. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm not used to being in person. Yeah, right. That's the other thing. So we've been, I've been working all summer on, on locking in some um, of our 
business leaders who are in the trades, who yes. sell supplies and stuff. Right. Stuff, people that I'm not usually in contact with. Right. Uh, it's been really fun, and the outpouring of support has been great. Curry Hardware, Galvin Con Construction, Granite City Electric, Hancock Appliance, okay. um, Republic Plumbing, mm -hmm. Tiles by Perfection. They've all stepped up, plus more. South Shore Building Trades donated money for the trailer. Nice. Harbor One donated money for the structure that's the temporary structure that's going to cover it so they can work all year round uh, in the winter as well. This is going to be right at the high school they're right building? Right at the high it? school in the back, right outside the Votech, right outside their, uh, the, the technical part of the school, okay. in the back with the parking lot. The trailer's there. Okay. It's all set up. We're just uh, waiting to kick things off on Monday. Hmm. Uh, really excited about it. It was uh, something that we started working on, like I said, before the pandemic. Yeah. Kids weren't in school. So right. again, it's not something you can do virtually. You can't build a house virtually. Right. And what we're really trying to do, the goal here is to entice more students to choose the tech, tech uh, uh, as an option. As the, they get the trades, older. you the mean? The trades. Well, there's a tremendous demand, as you know. It's, a, it's an unmet yeah. demand. Oh, for sure. And yeah. it's, it's gone crazy. And the pandemic has accelerated yes. that. The average age of a tradesman and woman in this country is 55 and older. So we need to replace them. Yeah. We need to show these young students they don't have to go to college if they prefer to work with their hands mm -hmm. and work in a trade. And this will give them an opportunity to work collaboratively. Yes. As you all know, when you do a project, you got to time it. So the electricians come in, the plumbers come in, the carpenters come in. The you can't put the walls up before the wiring's done. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the students generally work separately. Yeah. You know, in their disciplines, now they're going to work together. So we've had great support from the high school, from the administration, from the instructors. I can't tell you how excited we are about That's it. That's exciting. Is and it kids uh, from all grades? Do you know? All grades. Okay. All grades. So even the working together. Kids. Yeah. And uh, we're excited. It's it's again. It's this built up anticipation to get things going. Yeah. Um, but we're there. We're there. And we've got everything promised and committed that we're going to need to build this thing and then we're just going to have to order it when it's ready and these companies have all stepped up to mm -hmm. do that um, and when it's over we're going to auction off the house i was just going to ask what are they going to do with it once it's built we're going to auction it off <laughs> okay. the chamber will auction it off all right um, we will be the temporary owners of the house once it's built okay and we're going to auction it off and what money we get yep. we hope we get enough money so that they can the next class can build another one oh and this way the donations will you know, sort of be self-repeating every year. We don't have to go back and ask people to donate because that money will be there. Uh, these things are a phenomenon. People love them, and it's like a, it's like having a mobile home, only it's a real house. Oh yeah, there was a whole uh, TV series done about tiny houses. Yeah, uh, they're they're fascinating. Yeah. I mean, you have 326 square feet. You can sleep. You can cook. You can shower. You can do everything there. Yeah. And uh, and it looks. Like a real house. Like a house, like yeah. Like a real house. And so it's, uh, we're really excited about it. And uh, it'll be a challenge because you've got to put all that stuff in a smaller little space. You know? Oh, yeah. So Planning is, is a key, you yeah. know, because you need to use every little square inch of space for storage. So or anyone who's utility. interested can stop by for the ceremony that we're going to have at Monday at 1 o'clock at the 25th High School in the back parking lot. Russell Park area. Then? Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. And uh, we're, like I said, we're excited. The kids are chomping at the bit to get Great. going. Are they, are they going to have a social media presence watching the progress? I believe so. Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. they're, they're young kids, so yeah. we'll try to get them on. Well, maybe we'll do, we'll, this will be a positive TikTok for them. <laughs> you know, something that's <laughs> yes. not destructive, but actually constructive. Imagine, so, yeah. yeah. Where did and the idea come from? Is that, did, did um, somebody else do it? I have a friend who works in the, uh, works, represents the Remodelers and Builders Association. Oh, okay. He was up in New Hampshire. They've done it in other states. I don't think there's another city or town in Massachusetts First I've that's heard, done one. Yeah. So he pitched the idea to me, and I thought, and I pitched the idea to the unions and the contractors you and all these all folks, together. and they jumped. They nice. really jumped. It, and what makes me happy is that the vast majority of these donations are coming from local yes. suppliers, local builders, people here in the city or in the surrounding communities. Sure. So, so is the auction open to the public too? It will be. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So, all right. Absolutely. We're going to sell. I don't know. We'll. Like 200 tickets, maybe it'll okay. be one of those limited auctions where you can get something of real value for, I don't know, 100 bucks yeah, or something well, like that. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll yeah, see. more than that, but yeah. Yeah. So okay, it, fun. it's it's really really great, and like I said, it's licensed as a trailer. Mm -hmm. It'd be like uh, having a mobile home. You just hitch up and take it to your house down the Cape or up in the woods, or I mean, within permitting, maybe just put it in your driveway. <laughs> Yes. To talk, we'll have to talk to Jay Duker about that. But, yeah, all right. Um, okay, that's exciting. That's Something great. to look forward to. And last but not yeah. least, and if I have time. Yeah, please. Um, we have the President's Trail. Yes. Um, which we've been working on for, 
again, a couple of years. Yep. Um, it, what it does is it will sort of pull together all the, hist all the historic sites that have to do with John Hancock, John Adams, and John Quincy, John and Abigail yes. Adams. Uh, all of the sort of the patriots that created this country and created this city. Um, and we start at the Common, the Church of the Presidents, Old City Hall, the cemetery, yep. down to the birthplaces, up to the Abigail Adams Carn, and then back down Hancock Street, basically one route down, one route back up, to the cemetery, up to the Adams Academy, which is the birthplace of John Hancock, uh, to the Dorothy Quincy House, and then to, um, you know, Peacefield. It's great. And, and what we've done is we've, and the city has contributed the money for these beautiful new signs. The signs, I've up. seen them, they're gorgeous. We've got two up, yes. the rest are going up as we speak. Okay, we'll so look for you'll those. see them. It's a six mile loop, and what we want to do is attract, you know, it, it, it's, you sort of show our residents what they've got yeah. here. And we don't want to give away too much. So you we'll can access it and we'll then it bring there. in new people as well. So I'll be back okay. for the kickoff of that, Good. but it's something people can start doing right now because it's. Because it's, it's 70 degrees this week. It is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Good Thank to see you. Thank you very much, you're, Joe. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Speaking of uh, the weather, yeah, get out and enjoy it. Today will be the chilliest of the days this week, but lots of sunshine into the uh, lower 60s, starting to warm up tomorrow with mid 60s, and then we're into the lower 70s by Wednesday and Thursday. Thanks again to Tim Kale for joining us today. Thanks, Joe. Nice to be back in studio. Yes. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching Friday. Folks from the Quincy Animal Shelter here. And for all of us here at Quincy Access Television, until then, have a great week.